Consignment Accounts. Today in this video we are going to look at how you would do accounting records for where goods are sold on consignment. Well, what does this actually mean? Where goods are sold on consignment, it means that you've decided instead of selling to a particular retailer who would sell them on for you, you're going to sell them through an agent or somebody who is going to sell them on your behalf. However, they never actually own the goods themselves, so they don't carry the risk and you won't receive payment for the goods when you hand them over to your agent. In return for this service, the agent will earn a commission because remember, they won't have owned it themselves and they won't therefore have added on their own profit markup. So instead, a commission will be um, earned by them and you will have to obviously pay it, although usually this gets subtracted from the amount owed. So the calculation of how much you would receive would simply be the selling price in total, which usually you would set, less the commission. That would be expressed as a percentage of the selling price. The seller is then going to be paid after the sale is made. Usually this would be at the end of a particular period, either weekly or monthly. Let's have a look at the accounts that you will use for consignment accounting. Firstly, you will need a consignment account. This account is in fact an equity account that works just like a trading account. In other words, where you are selling and buying goods, you would have sales on the credit side and all your cost of sales, so your purchasing and all of your other costs on the debit side. This consignment account is going to work in exactly the same way. In addition, you will need an account for the agent. So whatever the agent's name is would be this account. This will be a liability account as it will show how much money is owed to the agent for costs that they've incurred as well as how much money they owe you as a result of the sales. So to start with, your consignment account which calculates your profit, you will show your inventory that might have been sent to the agent. Notice that I'm not showing any liability for this in the agent's account as yet. Although they have got the goods on hand, they do not owe any money for this. So this is simply an entry of goods from my inventory account or possibly even directly from my purchases account into my consignment account, which is like a little mini trading. In addition to sending the inventory to the agent, there might be other costs incurred, for example, delivery of the goods to get them to the agent. Any of these other costs that I have incurred as the seller will also need to be shown in the consignment account, as they are also part of the costs of selling these goods. Then you will show the agent's um, sales. So where this, the agent has now sold, you will show the total selling price, in other words 100% of the price as you probably would have marked it. Um, on the credit side of the consignment account, remember you would always show your sales on the credit side. At the same time, however, you need to show that the agent owes the money to you. So on the debit side of the agent's account, you will show this amount. So those are the two contra accounts for this transaction where the sales actually take place. You will then also need to take into account any costs that the agent incurs as well as their commission. You will probably receive a statement from them showing all the sales, less all the costs and commission that are due to them. These need to then be recorded in your consignment account as well as in the agent's account as it reduces the amount that they owe you as you actually owe them both the commission and the costs. So now in this agent's liability account you can see the net effect of how much actually needs to be paid. You would then also show in the agent account any amount that they pay you, um, which would probably offset their account and usually there would then be nothing left over um, and you would have a zero balance. However, this is not always the case. It is possible that the agent still owes you money if they've only pay paid in part um, or maybe if they're overpaid you might have a balance on the other side. So it's not usual for an agent account to have a balance at the end of the month but it is very possible. 
at the same time you can now go back to your consignment account and take into account your total sales that are on the credit side and all of the costs on the debit side remember you would have used your cost of inventory as well as any other costs you incurred and all the costs of the agent and the commission that you had to pay to the agent and that would then show you what is the actual profit that you ended up with on that consignment of goods so now you are able to see at the end of the day what your actual profit is because remember that when you receive this figure in bank that is not the profit that is simply the amount that you have received from the agent when you are calculating your commission if they give you the overall selling price, in other words, that is 100%, um, then it's relatively easy because the commission is usually expressed as a percent of the selling price. So it's pretty straightforward. However, it often happens where they give you the net price, in other words, the amount that they have paid you after the commission. And in this case, you have to be a little bit more careful. Keep in mind that your commission is always expressed as a percentage of the selling price and not a percentage of the net price paid. The net price percentage, therefore, is going to be the 100% of the selling price less the commission percentage, um, which might be anywhere from 5 to 20 or even 30% perhaps. So if you are going to use a commission of say 20%, it would mean that your net price paid would actually be only 80% of that selling price. This means that if you are given the actual net price paid, you can work out your selling price as the net price um, that was given, so the rand value or dollar value of that, divided by the 80% in our example or whatever it might be. Just keep in mind that you have to calculate it um, as part of the ne um, net price percentage, not the 100% of the selling price. If you need to work out the commission on that amount, you would again take your net price, but in this case you would need to times it by the commission percentage divided by the net price percentage. So if we are using a commission of 20%, you would say your commission rand value would equal your net price as an actual dollar or rand value times 20% divided by 80%, and that would then give you the amount that you are looking for. It is possible that at the end of the period, there may be stock that is unsold, that the agent still has on hand. Where the stock is unsold, this consignment inventory, you need to value it. Your valuation needs to also include any additional costs. Remember, there might have been seller costs that you had, um, but... In addition, you need to take into account any of the um, agent uh, selling costs um, that they have perhaps charged. All of these costs you would need to then go and allocate per unit where you are aware of them. And in this case, you would then show it as a balance in the consignment account. In other words, the original inventory cost plus any additional costs allocated per unit. What you would usually do is take the total number of inventory or total quantity, take the total costs and divide it by that quantity to get an amount per unit and then work out how many are on hand at the end and allocate those as part of your inventory cost valuation. This is then going to affect your profit calculation. So your consignment account, exactly as we had it before, um, would simply include a balance at the end of the month. And that balance that you can see over here is quite simply your consignment inventory that you have on.